Hello, we're going to cover um, rational equations in this um, particular video. So they're, I mean, I know you've solved rational linear equations and essentially the main idea was to multiply by the LCD on every single term. And then um, what happens is, is that your linear equation with fractions turns into a linear equation without fractions, okay? It kind of works the same way, even with polynomials. So if I have a whole bunch of fractions, all I have to do is identify the common denominator. And then once I do that, I can multiply everybody by the common denominator. And what should happen is that all the fractions should go away, okay? So here's an example of them doing that. So we have um, three different terms, okay? And we need to find the common denominator and then we need to use it to get rid of all the fractions. So the only denominators I see here are x and x minus two. Neither one of them have any exponents on them. So my LCD will not have any exponents on them, but this is in fact the LCD. And so what they're doing is they're taking that LCD and they're multiplying it to the first fraction. Then they're taking that same thing and they're multiplying it by the second fraction. And then they're taking the same thing and they're multiplying it by that third term, which was one. And you could think of it as a fraction if you wanted to as over one, but it really doesn't need to be there, okay? Now, what happens when you have this situation going on? This X is gonna cancel with that X. This X minus two is gonna cancel with that X minus two. And so what you end up with is you end up with two times this parentheses equal to, and then here you end up with three X, which is this guy here. And then you end up with minus X times X minus two. One times X is just X. So that one is already there, it's just hidden, okay? And then times the X minus two. Now you did cancel out an X and an X minus two, which is the reason why those restrictions are right there. Um, but from there we can keep solving for X, okay? So as we keep solving for x, we're going to distribute. We get 2x minus 4. Here we get, oh, they skipped it, but we get 3x minus x squared plus 2x, which is where the negative x squared plus 5x came from. And then they move this over by adding it, and they minus to 5x. So that's where they got negative 3x, and the minus 4 is still there. Then they factored this, or you could use quadratic formula x minus 4x plus 1. So when they set this factor equal to 0, they get 4. And then when they set this factor equal to 0, they get negative 1. Now, before you do say that those are your actual solutions, you do want to make sure that none of those numbers make your denominator 0 at the beginning. So if I look here, if I plug in 4 here, it's not going to be 0. If I plug in 4 here, it's not going to be 0. So 4 is good. If I plug in negative one here, that's not zero. If I plug in negative one here, I get negative three, which is also not zero. So this will check out. I just need to make sure that it doesn't make my denominators zero. Um, and they went ahead and they checked it by actually plugging it in for X and then seeing if you got a true statement. I usually just check it in my denominator and as long as it checks out in the denominators, then it's pretty good. But that's assuming that I knew that I did all my steps correctly. If you're not sure if you're doing your steps correctly, then I would check the answers from the whole equation, okay? So for here, if I wanna find the LCD, remember you have X, you have three, and then you have six, which is two times three. Three is its own prime and X is just X. I don't know what it is, so I can't break it up any further, okay? But this means that my LCD is going to be everything I see distinct. So I see a two, I see a three, and I see an X. And none of them have exponents, so none of these are gonna have exponents. But if I multiply that out, I get six X. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take six X times four X minus six X times five over three equal to six X times X over six. So everything in black was there beforehand, right? It was all there beforehand. Everything in pink is what I'm doing to the problem, okay? 
And so notice that this x will reduce with that x. This six will reduce with this six. This three will reduce with the six, but it will become a two, right? So when I multiply my leftovers, I get six times four, which is 24, minus two times five, which is 10. And I still have that x there. And then here, x times x, which is x squared. And so this is a quadratic, which means I am gonna to need to move these two terms over. So there should be nothing. But when I move over the 10x, it's gonna become positive. And when I move over the 24, it's gonna become negative. And if I factor this, it's x plus um, 12 and x minus two. Those factors will multiply to give me negative 24, but combine to give me 10. And so then I get x equals negative 12 or positive two. And then you can check. I just checked to make sure neither one of them make the denominator zero. But if you wanted to check the whole thing, you could. So I would take four over negative 12 minus five over three equal to negative 12 over six. So if I type all of that in the calculator, I get four over negative 12 minus five over three. Calculator tells me negative two. And if I type this in the calculator, I get negative two. So that one checks out. Then if I check x equal to two, I have four over two minus five over three equal to two over six. This side of the equation becomes um, one third, and this side of the equation becomes one third, and so this one checks out as well. So this is in fact my answer. Okay. Next one, we have x plus five and x plus 10. You cannot factor those. So I can jump straight into my LCD. Um, since both of those are completely different from one another, I am going to include both of them in my LCD. And, and then I'm gonna multiply that. So I'm gonna take x plus five, x plus 10 times 18 over x plus five, minus x plus five times x plus 10 times 14 over x plus 10 equal to x plus five times x plus 10 times one. It gets multiplied to everything, okay? Here the x plus fives will cancel, here the x plus 10s will cancel, and here nothing cancels. So I'm left with 18 times x plus 10 minus 14, I'm gonna put the number in the front, times x plus five equal to one times anything is the same thing. So I just end up with these two factors. So let's see, that's 18x plus 180 minus 14x minus 70 equal to x squared plus 10x plus 5x plus 50. So this gives me 4x plus 110 equal to x squared plus 15x plus 50. This is a quadratic, so I am going to get it equal to 0. When I do that, I'm going to have to subtract 4x. So 15 take away 4x is 11x. And then 50 take away uh, 110 is negative 60. And so I would try to factor this. Um, I'm not sure about how to factor that. 60, one times 60, two times 30, three times 20, four times 15. I think that's gonna give me 11. So it would be X plus 15 and then X minus 11. So when I set each of those equal to zero, I get negative 15. And when I move that over, I get positive 11. Now, you do need to check them into your uh, problem. So if I check negative 15, I want to see if this equals 1, right? So I'm going to put that in my calculator. Fraction 18 on top negative 15 plus five at the bottom. 
then minus fraction 14 on top and negative 15 plus 10 on bottom. I do get one, so this does check out. Now I'm gonna try 11. And see if I get one. So I'm gonna go back and do 18 over 11 plus five minus fraction 14 over 11 plus 10. And for this one, I get, did I do that right? Yeah, I did do that right. But this one does not come out. Oh, it's because 11 is not correct. Where did I get 11 from? I just wrote that number down. It should have been four. 15 times four is 60. And so then when I add four over to solve for X, I would have gotten four. I should have been checking four, if that makes sense. Sorry about that. So when I plug this in there, I'm gonna be plugging in fours, not 11s. And I do get one, so it does check out. And just FYI, I'm just plugging it in the calculator. It looks exactly like it does on the paper. And up there, it looked exactly like it does on the paper. And I just put equal. And as long as it was equal to what was on the other side, we were good. So both of these are, are our answers. Now, oh gosh, this is the infamous problems over here. Um, we do have lots of space because it may take us some time to do this one, but let's talk about it. So it says you have an airline that runs a, a commuter flight between Portland, Oregon and Seattle, Washington. So they're kind of north of each other. I'm just gonna make them directly north. So let's say I have Seattle up here and then I have Oregon down here. And we're, this a plane that's going from one to the other, okay? It says, um, the, which they are 140. So this distance here is gonna be 145 miles, okay? It says an, incre an increase of 30 miles per hour in the average speed of the plane decreases the travel time by 12 minutes. What initial average speed results in this decrease in travel time? Okay, so this one's pretty complicated, but we're gonna figure it out. Now I know that distance equals rate times time, okay? So distance equals your rate times the time. Now it's saying what is what is the initial average speed, okay? That's R. So I don't know what the original R is, okay? So I'm gonna say that the original average speed is going to equal R. Okay, um, and I don't even know what the original time is. I'm gonna call that just T, okay? What I do know is that 145 miles has been traveled when I have dri driven um, Oh, this one's so complicated. Give me one second to like ponder this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically have two equations. We know that in order to travel the 145 miles, that's gonna be my rate times my time. The original rate times the original time got me that 145 miles, okay? However, um, I also know that that same distance can be traveled in, it says if I increase my rate, which means the old rate plus 300 or plus 30 miles per hour, but then that decreases my travel time by 12 minutes. So I can do minus, I don't wanna do 12 minutes because this is in miles per hour. 
right? So I need to know what 12 minutes is in hours. So 12 minutes equals how many hours? Um, in order for me to figure that out, I'm going to do one hour is 60 minutes, which tells me if I do this, top times top and bottom times bottom, I do know that minutes cancel with minutes. And I get 12 over 60, which is what? 12 clear 12 over 60 is 0 0.2, okay? So then I know that this is 0 0.2 miles. Now, instead of, instead of solving this equation, I can't solve this equation because there's two variables. I can use substitution. So I can use, instead of um, R, I'm going to divide by T on both sides. And that will cancel this. And I get that R is equivalent to this. So I'm going to use substitution and write that in there. So instead of R, I'm going to do 145 over T. Now, if I want to solve this, I am going to have to go ahead and FOIL that out. So 145 over T times T, the T's are going to cancel. I'm just going to have 145. 145 over T times this, 145 times 0.2 is 29. So it'll give me negative. 29 over t still. Then these two multiplied together is 30t. And these two multiplied together is negative 6. Now, this is a rational expression. So I'm going to multiply everybody, and I do mean everybody, by that common denominator. So what happens is here it cancels, and all the rest of the problem they now have T's. This becomes 30T squared and this becomes 6T. Now I am going to subtract 145T on both sides and it just so happens it's gonna wipe out on both sides. And I'm gonna rearrange this. So this is 30T squared minus 6T minus 29. Now, I'm not going to bother trying to factor that. I am just going to go ahead and use my quadratic formula. So I get t equals negative of b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I get positive 6 plus or minus the square root of something. Um, I get this big number over 60. And when I take the square root of that big number, I get this decimal. And so then I'm gonna take the positive and the negative, okay? So if I do the positive, I'm gonna do fraction six plus that answer over 60. And I get 1.38. This um, it says round to one decimal place, so 0.14. And if I do it again, I'm gonna do six minus this number over 60, and I get negative 1.2. Okay. Now, as far as remember, this is time. As far as time is concerned. This negative 1.2 does not make any sense. Can't go back in time, right? So I know that the time is going to be 1.4 hours, okay? But that wasn't what they asked me to find. What they asked me to find was what initial average speed, okay? So since I have this formula here to figure out what R is, I just need to plug in the T value that I found. So I'm going to take this 1.4 and I'm going to plug it all the way back into this. And what happens when I do that? I get 145 over the 1.4 hours equal to R. And 145 over 1.4 is 103.6. Um, 
And so this is the initial average speed, okay? And just FYI, I'm thinking that you probably should not round here. You should not round until the very, very end, okay? So when I plugged that into my calculator, it wasn't actually 1.4. It was, it was about 1.4, but what it really was, was 1.38 something something or another. 1.381925. Three, five. So when I go to plug it back in there, I should be plugging in that large number, or it's not, it's a small number, but that long decimal. And I'll show you why, because when you do plug in the exact decimal, like the long version of it, and you do 145 divided by that, you actually get a whole different response here for R. You get 104. 0.9, okay? So I would not round until your very last step, okay? Do not round until your very last step. Okay, let's keep it going. So for number four, we've got this here. This is just blank pages because I left myself room. Pages, blank pages so that I could work, but we didn't need all of those pages. Um, now we're here, okay? Now you can solve this one of two ways. You can either do the quadratic form, right? Because you have something and then something squared, or you could use the LCD. So if I rewrite this, I could square each of these. This becomes two times X squared over X plus four squared. And then if I really want to clean it up even more, I can just multiply by the two on the top. And the three on the top. And so I have this. In my LCD, the only factor I see at the bottom is x plus four, but over here it has a square. And I have to go with the highest exponent when I'm doing the LCD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply x plus four squared to every single term. And so what happens is here, the x plus four squared will cancel. Here, one of them will cancel, but I'll still have one left over. And here, nothing cancels. And here, zero times anything is still zero. So what I end up with is two x squared minus three X times that extra X plus four, and then minus two times the X plus four squared, okay? And so then I'm going to do some of this computation. I'm gonna distribute that negative three. And then before I distribute the two, I'm actually gonna FOIL this. So it's X plus four times another X plus four. Um, I can combine these two x squareds. So this is just negative x squared. And then here I get x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. And if I distribute that 2, I get negative 2x squared, negative 8x, negative 8x, and negative 32. And then if I combine my like terms, I get negative 3x squared, negative 28x, and negative 32. Now, if I move everybody over, or if I divide everybody by negative 1, I can get um, this positive x squared, because I don't like negatives. So I get 3x squared, positive 28x, and positive 32 equal to 0. I do have some more space over here for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, that. So 
let's see, if I got to factor this, 3 times 32 is 96, and I have 1 times 96, 2 times um, 48, 3 times 32, 4 times 24, ah, those will give me 28. So then this becomes 3x squared plus 4x plus 24x plus 32. So here I have an x in common. I will factor that out. I'll bring down my plus sign. Here I can factor out an 8. I get 3x plus 4. They have a 3x plus 4 in common. So I have x plus 8 left. And then I will set each factor equal to zero. And so I get three X equals negative four, X equals negative four thirds. And here I get X equals negative eight. And those are the two solutions. Neither one of them will make my denominators zero. So they are perfectly good, okay? Now, if I had chosen to solve it using the quadratic form, okay, remember what the problem looked like. It looked like this. It might have been shorter to do it if you recognize the quadratic form, okay? So if I had recognized it, then I would have let u equal what's in the parentheses. So then this expression would have been written like this, where u was x over x plus 4. And so then if I do the quadratic, I don't even need to do the quadratic formula. I'm pretty sure I can factor this. Um, 2u times u times 2 times 1, negative and a positive. If you can factor it, it's definitely shorter, right? So when I set this factor equal to 0, I get 2u equal negative 1, or u equals negative 1 half. Here, when I set the other factor equal to 0, I get u equal to 2. And so then if I plug back in what u was, on both, side, on both of these equations, I'm going to have to multiply by the common denominator. Here, the common denominator is both denominators. Here, the common denominator is just x plus 4, because it's the only denominator. So that cancels, 2 cancels, cancel, all I got so far. So then this and this becomes 2x equal to, and if I distribute that negative 1, negative x plus 4, if I add that over, 3x equals 4, and if I divide by 3, I get x equals 4 thirds which is the exact same thing that we got up there. Oh, wait, no, that should be negative. Which means it'll be negative there, and then therefore it'll be negative here, because the negative times a positive would have made it negative. Same thing over here, those cancel, I get x equal, and when I distribute this two, I get two x plus six. If I minus this over, I get negative, six, negative x equals, um, Oh, this should be eight, not six. Two times four is eight. I don't know what's going on. I can't multiply today. Um, but minus that will be negative x. And then if I divide by negative one, I get x equals negative eight, which is the exact same answer that we got up there, okay? So you can solve it either way, either using the um, LCD or using the, um, you're gonna have to do LCDs later anyway, right? So I don't know why they would do quadratic form, but you could. And that was the point there. Okay, now these kinds of problems, you do need to know a little bit before you can do them. Um, you do need to know the general formula that's used to solve work problems. So when you're solving work problems, you do have this formula. It's one over the first person's time or first item's time one over the second item's time is the same as one over the time it takes the item or the people to do it together, okay? If you don't have this formula, you can't do the problems. So it says working together, 
two people can complete the task in six hours. So then that means that T together is six hours. It says working alone, one person takes two hours longer than the other person. So person one is gonna take two hours longer than the second person. Um, and it says, how long would it take for each person to complete the task? So I know what to plug in for T1 and I know what to plug in for T together. So this is gonna become one over two plus T2. This is gonna be one over T2. And this is gonna be one over six. Now, what is the common denominator? These are all completely different from each other. So the LCD is actually six, T2, and then two plus T2. So I'm gonna need to multiply that to everybody. So six T2, two plus T2 times the first fraction. Plus LCD again, times the second fraction. And then LCD again, times the last fraction. And so what happens? The two plus T2s cancel, the T2s cancel, and the sixes cancel. So what am I left with? I am left with 6T squared times one, which is just 6T squared, plus I'm left with one times this, which is just two plus T2. And then the sixes cancel, but I'm still left with T2 times two plus T2. So then let's keep going. Here I have six T2s and another T2. So I have seven T2s here plus two. When I distribute this, I'm gonna get two T2 plus T2 squared. And so I do have a square, I do have a quadratic. So I'm gonna minus the seven T2 and minus the two. That will give me the T2 squared. And when I minus, I'll get negative five T2. And when I minus the two, I'll get minus two. Now this I cannot factor. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula and then see what T2 equals. So I ran out of paper. I'm gonna use this space right here. So I'm going to say T2 equals negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. So I get five plus or minus 25 plus eight, which is 33 over two. So if I type in the positive, clear that out, fraction, five plus the square root of 33 over two, I get about 5.4. Then if I do the same thing, but with a minus, I get negative 0 0.4. Now, remember, they're talking about somebody's time, how long it takes somebody to do something. So it's definitely not going to be a negative time. It's going to be the positive time. So it takes person two. We figured out that T2 equals about 5.4 hours. But if I want to find T1, then that's going to be two plus that. So that's going to be about 7.4 hours. Okay. And that is how you do the work problems. Okay. Um, again, we have the quadratic formula in there. I'm trying to squeeze it all in, but it doesn't really fit everything. There we go. That's enough. So we just took this number and brought it up here because T2 does equal that, right? T2, T2. So since T2 equals 5.4, we wrote T2 equals 5.4 up here. And then we, um, we just plugged in that 5.4 and that's how we got 7.4. 
So the first person is going to do it in 7.4 hours, and the other person is going to do it in 5.4 hours by themselves. Okay. So it makes sense that together they do it somewhere in the middle of those two. Um, that is the end of this uh, video.